Hello and welcome to part 14, or if you prefer, the final part. Seeing as CL has elected to join us up here 3600 kilometers in the air, we don't have to bother going back to the Resistance base to commence our final mission. Instead, we can choose to either go through the door to our right and start it automatically, or take the time to have a heartfelt conversation with CL, in which she confides in us her sincere wish for us to return safely, regardless of whether or not we manage to take down Neo Arcadia's tyrannical ruler. How touching. Anyway, this is the final area of Neo Arcadia, Neo Arcadia Core, or Area X. No mystery as to who we'll be meeting here. However, being a Mega Man game, there is a boss rush, and we're actually already there. I'll be cutting out here and rejoining us afterwards. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing some familiar faces. Music used there was from the GBA beat-em up, Astro Boy Omega Factor, as is the track I'll be using for the next part of the boss rush. We split it up into two sections for this game, just to make it easier to give some semblance of size to this level. Because of the layout, it ends up being three sections of a uh, regular stage interspersed by two boss rush sections. You can skip a full third of that, though, by taking this. It's a semi-secret shortcut that leads to a full life container, a one-up, and, um a direct passage to the next part of the boss rush. But of course we have to show the rest of that part, don't we? So let's just cut back in time and take the lower path. Quite a hodgepodge of enemies in this level. A bunch of tanks, randomly placed uh, turtles here, and pantheons, and pantheon fists. Very tech-looking background here, which is fitting seeing as this is a stationary satellite in orbit. And I'll be cutting out here again. And there's the Far Guardians we fought. You may have noticed back there me showing off the rather infamous locking trick with Harpuya. But back to Phantom, something rather odd seems to be happening with him, what with the uncontrollable vibrations and all. What? That was unexpected. Being the most loyal of Copy X's guardians, Phantom elects to sacrifice himself for the good of his master. How honorable. Those fireballs that he produces upon his uh, untimely demise aren't a one-hit kill or anything, and they don't do that much damage, but given that Phantom is arguably the hardest of the Guardians, you'll likely be roughed up after dealing with him, and if it catches you off guard, it can kill you. Now that they're done, though, uh, there's really nothing stopping us from getting to Copy X himself. Except these Pantheon mooks, but, you know, who really takes notice of them? And we're at the big foreboding boss doors. Let's uh, take a moment to gather ourselves, take a deep breath, and head through. I wonder who we'll meet. What? Harpoon? The Guardians? They recover fast. They don't seem at all perturbed by the fact that they're missing one of their members. Oh, but here we go. 
Finally, we're meeting the main antagonist of the game. This is Capix, and as you can see, he's undergone the same redesign that Zero did. He doesn't look similar to how he uh, did in the X series, but you can see certain elements that uh, carried over, especially his helmet. You can also see certain parts of his body design, such as that vest he's wearing and his boots, that are retained by his four guardians just to create an artistic similarity between them. But he has rather ominous red eyes. That, those seem out of place. And of course he believes that what he's doing is right, seeing as he's protecting humans, but given his rather um unpleasant policies toward reploids, we're still gonna have to take him out. He doesn't look that bad right now. I mean, he's kind of scrawny and doesn't seem that well armed. I'm sure this will be a piece of cake. Wait, what's... Well, that's kind of neat. He just donned his battle suit. This is actually the ultimate armor. As you saw there, he used the Nova Strike, although it isn't nearly as powerful as it was in the X-Series. In a nod to the variable weapon systems of uh, ages past, he is able to change his element on the fly, and as such, he gets a ton of different attacks. He can also charge his attacks to create a, uh, another bunch of them, and this is his EX skill, Infinite Life. As you saw there, he actually has a rather low health bar. He only has two in relation to his Guardian's three. And that EX skill helps him uh, even the playing field a bit by restoring one full health bar. Unfortunately for him, he can only use it once. I try to take the time to show off more of his attacks, seeing as he has such a huge amount, including a charge kick, which is rather odd seeing as X himself didn't have the ability to slide. But regardless, he's already gone down. I wonder if they were going anywhere with that angel wing motif he has going on. I mean, he has them popping out of pretty much every orifice on his body. Oh dear, looks like it's not quite over yet. Okay. That's ominous. This is the final boss of the game, Seraphex, and it's actually something called an Armed Phenomenon, but they don't really get into that more until Zero Two, so I'll just leave it at that for now. This guy has a lot of, uh, divine-themed attacks. He'll purge the ground with fire like so. He'll uh, attack you with holy lasers. He'll try to capture you with halos. And he'll use this as EX skill Angelic Barrage, where he actually uses those two spike pillars he brought with him. Those things are also his downfall, though. You can use it to dodge most of his attacks, and uh, they're a very convenient method to hitting him. He doesn't have much health, he's a really predictable boss. He just follows the same pattern over and over, and he goes down in utter shambles. Shameful, really. It's a sad sight to see. This line here is actually rather odd. Zero claims X wasn't quite as naive as uh, Copy X here, but I'm gonna have to disagree with that statement. He had quite a few instances in the past, like with Double and, uh, and that whole thing he had going on X7. But Copy X isn't quite done, and if he can't beat us, he is definitely going to make sure that we can't escape. So he is going to blow up the entire place with us in it. And we've got to escape. And, uh, it looked like someone was following us there. Not sure how he managed to get all the way out of this satellite and all the way down the elevator before it collapsed on him. But, you know. And here's that odd Cyberdolph again. Apparently he came out with us. I mean, we have an inkling as to who he is, but... Could it really be? Well, I guess that answers our question. That Cyber Elf that gave us the Z-Saber and has been helping us throughout the game is, in fact, X himself. 
it's not immediately apparent how he became like that, but I guess we'll just have to take what he's saying at face value. Seeing as we're stuck out here in the middle of the desert. Somehow. We fell out of orbit, I guess. And with that rather cool scene, Mega Man Zero One comes to a close. Quite a fun game, although it does have its flaws. It starts out really strong, but then starts recycling stages and music and wearing itself down. The Cyber Elf System 2 could use a lot of work, and it does eventually get that work, but in this game it's clunky and inconvenient to use. The penalties are way over the top, and it requires far too much grinding to be of any real use. Two things they did do really well in this game, though are the gameplay and the story. In the X series, Zero had to constantly stop and slash enemies, and it was a lot slower paced. But in this game, they made him a lot more fluid and dynamic, and that allows you to just race through the stage, killing everything as you go. It's really fun and gives you a definite feeling of power, more so than you had in the X series, and it's something I really, really like. The credits are going to go on for a while, and I'm going to leave them on just to give a little credit to the people who made this game. But I'm going to cut out here for a while until the very end. You can skip ahead if you want, but you may want to stay for the very end and our last mission results screen. I'll see you then! And there we are, final mission results screen. As promised, 100s through and through. And for finishing the game, we gain the ability to play on hard mode. This basically just means you can't use uh, 
any of your higher weapon skills, you can't level them up or anything. But that's actually going to be the end of the LP. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join me next time. This is Gam, signing out.